Ho, ho, hoi there. It's me, Rain Hat Claus. We're getting to the point now where teaching step by step is starting to make less and less sense. So I'm going to speak more generally from now on. You'll never guess. The one thing that won't change though is actually been. How to make hair in Blender. It's Christmas week, a time where we get together with friends and families and recap the most important things you've learned so far. And gone and not your friend. Squares are though, we must use them as much as possible. Triangles can get us through some hard times, but we mustn't rely on them in the early stages of modelling. Never delete the default cube. References can be dragged and dropped onto the scene straight from your file explorer. Right click select for those of you who sort of blend in the traditional way and left click select for the dummies. G to grab, S to scale, R to rotate. Middle click controls view rotation. Shift middle click controls the view position. You can combine G, S and R with an axis, X, Y or Z to grab, scale, or rotate on an axis. You can also type a number after for different effects. R, Z, 90 will rotate clockwise on the Z axis, 90 degrees. S, Y, minus two will scale on the Y axis by two times the original length, but flipped because of the minus. If you replace the minus two with a zero, It'll flatten the selected, since zero times the length would also equal zero. You don't need more than 100k polygons. Even when I try to keep my visuals high on my complicated models, I'm still under 80k. It would make sense to have more polygons if you were doing a lot of very close-up renders of the model, but outside of that, not really. A to select all, double tap A to deselect all, double tap G to slide along an edge. Shift and E to crease an edge, only works on subdivided meshes. Control and E to bring up the edge menu. Remember, if mark sharp doesn't work, you might have to reset vectors in the mesh. Normals menu. Shift and D to duplicate the selected. Control R to loop cut. K to bring up the knife tool. Left click to cut and space to confirm the cut. X to bring up the delete menu, M to bring up the merge menu, E to extrude, I to inset, Alt V to rip vertices without a hole, and V to rip vertices all simultaneously creating a hole. F to make a face, Control and lasso to deselect, Shift and lasso to select, H to hide, Alt H to unhide. Your hand is the perfect hand reference. Try to avoid shapeless spaghetti. Pancake's hand. Topo flow is important for animating and deformations. And finally, remember to save. If there's anything you think I've missed, do comment it down below. Now in Blender, we can finally get to work on the hair. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to cover some minor parts and then I'm just gonna time lapse everything else. I'll, I'll, I'll show you all the ways of making hair that I know how to. Just go numpad one to the front view. We'll start with something simple, like, like the fringe. Let's start with the fringe. So, judging from the shape of the head, I'm probably just gonna copy something and also we can see that this is not symmetrical at all well it is a little bit the symmetry stops about here and then everything from that point is asymmetrical so i'm going to select the head go to edit mode going to select some of these 
cut that I want the fringe to start. So we'll select this too. We'll just shift D. Um, I've got this here. We're going to right click once. P and then separate by selection. Go back to object mode. We'll have this here now. We'll name that fringe. I hope I've got the right one. Okay, what's this? This is eyelashes, so I'll name that. I've got anything else that isn't labeled properly. We do have some extra hand references. I'm going to get rid of those actually. We'll start messing with this. It still has subdivision on, that's fine. I'm just going to try to bring these across to make the fringe shape. And this, probably going to merge it down at last. Um, at last, maybe these across, GX, GZ, okay, now we have this shape, I'm going to bring these down, let's turn that on for a moment, okay, I'm going to shift so I can click, click the center of that, and space, I've got this more curved shape. I just want it to mimic the shape of the fringe as best as I can. Maybe this will be alright. Since we've got the reference anyway, might as well use it. Okay, so now the fringe starts like that, though, however, this is inside the head so i'm just going to bring this out and number pad three gy gy the hair does not usually sit perfectly on the head so i need to try to make this show that a bit okay so now we're working with planes to make this part of the hair. I'm going to still try to make these evenly spread apart and we have this section of hair here. So I'm actually going to control R and do that. We have this section of hair here. I'm going to bring these across going to extrude these down as well. E to extrude. Bring these down and they start splitting too. Now it wouldn't be too difficult to just add an extra strand here for example. But first we'll just do this. Grab that, shift E. And then these as well. Extrude these. And these. E. E. Scale that down. We can just like this whole thing. Except for this line here. Shift E. These two, shift E. Turn on x ray so we can see what we're doing. And I guess for the sake of the video, I'll go decently detailed. The thing is, you can you can have a fringe like this and you can draw some things to be transparent. So this doesn't have to perfectly strand for strand match, but I'm just going to do it just, just for this video. 
going to bring these across actually so now these this is matching the reference that can start about there this part I'm going to extrude you know what um at last we'll have a triangle since it's subdivided so we can risk it let's take this off item crease e to extrude e to extrude take these creases off and we want to add to this edge here right even more like the reference now. So we'll put these here. And these um, at last. When we have shapes like these, we can also put loops through here. And bring these outwards. So if I just deselect these with control, well actually, and then GY, we out in the Y direction. Suddenly the hair starts to have a bit more shape. We can select these lines, shift E, mark C, nope, shift E, mark sharp. And is this working how I need it to? Yeah, for the most part. This is sort of being a bit more shapely. I wonder if it's worth doing this. And you know what? Because these all come to such a straight point. But these do kind of come here. Let's cut this here just so it uh, matches the reference a bit better. You can do this. And now I need to fix the topology because it's going to be a bit messy. So we've got the squares, um, at last, um, at last. These can also go up, geez, uh, just to give it more shape. This can go across, gy, gy. Can select this line. Control E, mark sharp. So now, so now we're getting a bit more shape on the fringe. Okay. So we'll go to object mode, and for now we'll apply the mirror. So clipping is on. We'll apply it. Go to edit mode. Now make sure your mirror isn't on up here, the mesh symmetry, otherwise you won't be able to edit individual parts by themselves. So make sure that's not on. And we can start making this fit the reference a bit better.
And now just to give this better shape. Control E, mark seam. Okay, not terrible though, it does need a lot of work. Control E, mark seam. Nope, control E, mark sharp. Okay, right now the main thing you just want to do is have this be one a, a nice shape. So just slight edits, pulling, pushing things. You want it to look like good, good hair, good hairy hair. And also proportional editing is, is a good friend. The start of the hair looks like this. That's one way to make hair, starting with a plane. Now another one. We'll we'll do the some of the little details, our whole gear and stuff. So let's start here, add curve circle I'm going to put this y0 and x90 let's try 0 0.01 and hopefully that's not too small we can just grab that put that over here it's going to edit mode Well, let's turn this off. I want it to be... Let's put that down to 1. But that's called Resolution... Resolution Preview U. I'll put that down to 1. It's just the amount of sides it has. you can grab this i believe sx go in the x direction actually if we put this to two you can see it a little better i should be able to just delete this one at the back let's go in the x if select this okay that seems like it would be better than gz flat flatten out the back a little bit sx so now i've got a curve at the front and it's a very smaller curve at the back this can be just Put down to one again. I'm gonna add a subdiv later. So go to object mode, add mesh, no, add curve bezier. We'll put this to zero, 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 and we'll put the size to 0 0.1, I guess. Now this, we want it to, okay, we'll go to geometry, then object, and then here, bezier circle, this is the thing we just added, and that will make it solid. We can also go to this little spanner thing here, which should be all of the modifier properties we can go, 
and subdivide it. So now it'll have that shape that we did before. Okay, what else now? We'll go to this curve and put that down to two. And let's uncheck this so we can see what the topology looks like. Which is that? Hmm. Okay. So starting with that, we'll go to edit mode. A, select all. I'm just going to bring this up. S, scale it down. R. Let's just do R90. RZ. Now there is a top and bottom to this. Let me. Okay. So. I would I would use this as the top because it rotates the whole thing and this would be the bottom because I can't I can't rotate this in the z-axis so the top I'll put at the root and the bottom I'll not put at the root G Y R Z just try to make this look like the shapes that we have here so I'll alt scale, bring this, rotate, alt scale, E, E. Now this line should be going like the center of the curve. It starts about here. It just has to fit on the head in a decent way. GY. I'm going to put it slightly in front of the fringe. Something like that. And also this should follow the curve. These lines should follow the curve of the fringe. So this following this. I want to show you this a little better since it was a bit hard to see with the reference in the background and such. So let's take a look at the shape. We have these points on the curve. We can E to extrude, R to rotate, and very slowly we can start making a shape. This will rotate the whole thing, but this won't rotate the whole thing. So I like to put this at the root of hair strands. So this has got a bit more topology than the other one, so I'm going to tone that down to about two. We can alt scale to make things thinner, and if we bring these a bit further away from each other. Now if we just scale on this, might be able to see a bit better if I put it here. You'll see that the curve becomes more pointy or wide. This is just with S scaling. So this has an effect on the curve. If this is moved upwards, it only affects one half of the curve instead of both. And same with this. So using that information, you can make a lot of different curves with just, with just this. You just need to be aware of all of these angles because all of these angles make sense, make a lot of difference, especially in three dimensions. Right. I'm actually going to segments, subdivide, and bring this back. Bring this also back, but up. And bring that inside of the head. We don't want to see this. We can bury it like that. And we have one strand of hair. That's how you make hair strands with curves. We can hit A, Shift D to duplicate. We can snap in the x-axis for now. And we can just follow this curve now.
You can also make these thicker if you don't like the flat, sh the flat design. So where is this? You can just, I want to see if I can show you at the same time. So this is selective, SZ, and it'll just get thicker and thinner. I'm going to do that actually, but take a closer look at this. SZ, and everything using that shape will also change itself. So yeah, that's a bit thicker, and I do like it, so I'm going to keep it as is. What else can we do for the hair? You know what? I'll show you. I'll show you what else we can do for the hair. I'm just going to save this. These are all the hairs I've done so far, mainly females, just because that's what I get the most. So this fella looking hair has a lot of hand-drawn textures on the back and a lot of curves on the top. I don't make hair like this anymore. I feel like this design and the shape just adds a lot of topology that's not necessary. This could be flat and still have the same effect, more or less, and be a lot less messy too. The front of the hair is flat, flatter, but still using those um, curves, just edited at the ends. And the back is flat, as I said before, with these little triangles of shape. Now looking at this guy's hair over here, this is probably more complicated than it needed to be. There's lots of... of planes with um, the back faces added that just slid on there. There's lots of parts that are stitched together that not necessarily needs to be. If you see here that there are some parts here that are together like this part here. Let me go to edit mode so I can show you dot by dot. These are together, these are together, got very very complicated very quickly but with all this mess and all the mess of unwrapping I had to do just to color it in a decent way I think it looks nice the because of how complicated it was there was no option for me to not mess with the normals so it's shaded a bit nicer. These normals are not how it usually looks. If we go to edit mode, mesh, normals, reset, factors, and you'll see what it what it usually looks like. And that's that's a lot. Ideally I would not make hair like this again. I would definitely have some kind of starting point or some kind of part so it's not so crazy all the place. Let me just undo the mess that I've done. But as far as texturing goes, it doesn't look terrible at all. Right, now these are the better hairs that I've done and they're all female. This lovely set of locks and you'll see in this mode that there's a lot of curves that are being used like these are all curves and they go all the way down to the tails slightly edited here and there but this top section is not curves but it does attach to curves so these are curves at the ends, but they've been attached to the top section because having them separate wouldn't look very nice. These are also curves. These are planes that I've edited manually, like what I just showed you. 
and the fringe is actually separate from the rest of the hair as you can see. I like this one a lot, especially with the, the texturing that's gone along with it. This is pretty much the same, but with a lot more editing done to the curves at the bottom. You'll see here that some parts connect to each other, like this connected to that. These are connected and some curves here and there, but again, the head is flat with some hand-drawn details and parts because I personally think it looks better than this. I think these parts look way better than this. This is, again, very similar, especially since it's uh, anime shaded. There was really no need to get really complicated with it. Super simple. I'll show you. Pretty much flat almost all the way through. I don't think... I think these are all... I don't think any of these are curves except for the ones at the back. So these are curves here, and then these are just flat planes that I've edited and curved around like I did with the fringe. These are just to force the quads to bend in a specific angle. Sometimes the angle they bend at by default isn't so nice, so I'll, I'll add triangles here and there to force the bend to be a certain way. So like here, and this is only after I finish modelling it that I mess with it and add triangles like that. So let's do one final thing with this model before I just go straight into time-lapse mode and that will be the the hair base. Right, gladly we do have a side view for what the bottom of the hair is going to look like. So all that I'm going to do is try to copy that as best as I can. We can start here. Alt V as a start. We can also scale that a little bit. Now let's see this S. Let's scale this a tiny bit. GX. Bring that inward. We have a little bump for the hair. Might as well sharpen this. Mark sharp. Mm, looks like the some strands for the hair starts over here. We'll do that. And I guess we'll just leave this a bit flat, a bit on the flat side of things. I'm just double tapping G by the way. Here. Apply V on that. Snap it in the X direction, X axis, I mean. V on this. Um, at last. Increase that. Edge and subdivide, there we go. Let me try to extrude a side from there. This should be out, more out, I guess. GX, GX. Let's bring these outwards a little bit. E. Bring these. And 
this two for now, because why not? These two. Let's see what we could do about this shape down here. Seems like quite a longer area of flat head back here. It's probably worth increasing these clear sharp, even though I just creased them. Clear sharp. What about this? Yeah, let's keep that one for now. We'll do this. Let's see. This. Okay. edges of this control R. Okay, join these two together. Okay, join these two together and now we should have, as long as we don't select these, dissolve vertices. Oof, no, 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 no. Dissolve edges. More topology to work with. Dissolve edges. Okay. This face. E. 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 Um, it's center. Let's uncrease these. Show E clear shop. Crease these. Shift E. Let's do this side first so I can see it a bit better. We'll do that with this. This, this, these little faces.
would be nice if this did have a bit more shape. Oof. Okay. For the sake of aesthetics, and the sake of aesthetics only, I'm going to do this. That. That. And that. Into control R here. And control R. Here. Can can connect these with the knife tool. Try to neaten these a bit. Right, so the rest of that can be drawn in. Object mode. Yeah, I like how this looks. It's cute. I'll go over like one more thing, probably. And then the rest will just be time lapse, I think. So we'll just add mesh. Cube. Scale that down. Go put that here. Modifier subdiv. Apply modifier subdiv. There we go. Object shading smooth. This, I'm just going to take advantage of the shape to... Ooh, where would that be? That's behind the ear. So, GY. Take advantage of the shape to make more hair stuff. Turn on X-ray. X, delete that top part. Extrude this upwards. We'll snap in the Z. We'll put that on cage. Scale, scale, and you know, delete these faces too. That's at zero to flatten it in the Z axis. See this is about here. This. It's about here. Just bring these across. Let's actually, let's do this first. We can just select this right and Alt V. Snap it in the Y. We have a little edge. A little edge of hair. Grab these faces. Scale it. No, without proportional editing, scale it a little bit. To mark these edges sharp. Mark sharp. And these mark sharp. Is it? Oh, I don't think it's working. Mash normals. Reset factors, control E, clear, sharp, and we'll just sharpen these again. Control E, mark, sharp. Now we have this kind of shape going.
Optic mode, control A, all transformations. Uh, add mirror modifier. The rest is going to just be time lapse. I don't think there's possibly a way I could explain how to do every hairstyle ever, so enjoy the time lapse. Thank you. 
this has been quite the hassle. Right, the hair. A lot more well put together than last time, but... Let's see what we've got here so far. The reference image is actually... I put the opacity up a bit, but I'm going to put it back down to 0.3. Oh, that's not 0.3. There we go. And let's put the mode to whatever this is. Material preview. You'll see that it's not perfect one-to-one -one of the reference, especially these side pieces. The side hairs can be a bit difficult because, you know, sometimes they're a bit too forward and, and these definitely were. We've got all these different hair pieces. The top I did with a cube and then added some textures to that, I guess, if you want to put it this way. There's some shapes I've made under here and here, which is just extrusions if we go into edit mode. You'll be able to see that a bit better. There to replicate some of the, the dark shading that you'll see on the reference. You can see it better in this in this view. There's some dark shades. The fringe I already showed you about that. Right now the main thing we have left to do is sort out this. There's lots of curves here and we've got this mesh here too. I'm just going to start hiding bits that we don't need to mess with right now. What about this? Okay, that's connected to that. This, let's just say first. We're going to go to the modify properties and get rid of these for now. Now this should just be some curves. If you're going to edit mode, you'll see that it's still curves. Go to object mode. We'll do object convert. And we'll just convert it to mesh. If we go into edit mode again, you'll see it's no longer curves. Okay. Go back to object mode. We can add those modifiers back. So we'll need a mirror and a subdiv. Nice, nice, nice. We'll click on this with your click select and then shift click on the, the hair base. Control J to join them, and then we can go into edit mode. See what we can do about these faces. So these three, I want to keep them to this section. This might be able to have a section all to itself, and then we've got these two. How best can we do these now? Just select these at the moment. G Z R E rotate on the E axis. We're just going to now try to match these faces up with the hairs. So I'm gonna start these here. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, we'll, uh, it'll fit together somehow. Oopsie, daisy. We've got these ones too. I'll just do this. And I hope for the bus. Control R, Control R. K. Cut these. And let's see what we can do about joining. Turn off the mirror for now. And hide these for a moment. Okay. Control R. We'll slide these over. Um, at last. And at last. Okay. 
Okay, these all have their own spot. Oh dear. That's gonna need a lot of fixing. I'm just gonna slide these across. Trying to get them to be a half decent shape. <laughs> if I can remember what they were before. As far as the hair goes, not everything needs to be connected, but it is nice to have at least the top sections connected. The fringe not included, but it does make for uh, nicer lighting. You could also edit it so some of these strands go more all the way up instead of just part, part way. It would help with the lighting a little bit. But as far as, as, far as it goes right now, it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. Well, I don't know what else to say except for this is going to be a nightmare to edit. Uh, I hope you managed to understand some of these techniques used to make hair. And I hope you can make whatever hair it is that you're planning on making, whether that's using entirely uh, planes or even... Or even, or even curves or even just editing shapes that you bring in. Hair can be made in all sorts of ways. Just make use of the creases and the creases and the sharpness. If you want to see more art and game shenanigans, follow me on twitch.tv slash rainhat. Maybe you'll be lucky and witness a sacrifice or two. You can also follow updates on Twitter and join the gremlins and the discord. Remember to like, subscribe and tell your mum that you love her. Because if you don't, I will. And you don't want me to tell her. This series is brought to you by my Patreons, with special thanks to My Grey Clouds and Grey Skies, Eel Hee Haw, Pixel Pagoth, Soat, and Spud the Cat. See you in the next class. Farewell!